So I've been investing in a stocks and shares ISA since about 19 years old, which over the years has helped me buy many things and earn thousands of pounds in interest. I've been able to purchase a great flat in central London. I've been able to go on fantastic holidays. It means that I've got a great safety blanket. So if anything went wrong in life or I needed to dip into these savings, then I've got that little pot of money there to keep me going over a good few months, if not into years, because every single year that I've been investing into my stocks and shares ISA and some of the funds I've chosen, I've been able to gain about 30% annualized return every single year, which is not bad. If you want to learn all about Vanguard stocks, how to invest in a stocks and shares ISA, then this video will definitely help you understand the basics behind how to be inflation and grow your money over time. If your money is currently sat in a cash ISA, you're probably getting about 0.1% interest every single year. At the moment, inflation is really high and it's around 5%, if not a little bit more. So if inflation is 5%, that means the cost of living is going up by 5% every single year. The difference here is that if your savings are going up by 0.1%, you're actually losing 4.9% every single year of your money if you're not making sure that your interest is above inflation. Don't get me wrong, when you start out investing, it can be quite daunting and scary hearing loads of terms like ETFs, bonds, equities, indices, all of this jargon that's going on. In this video, we're going to simplify all of this and I'm gonna help you understand how to get started in investing. A stocks and shares ISA is really similar to a normal cash ISA in the UK, where at the moment you can put up to £20,000 in there every single year completely tax-free. Any interest you gain within the ISA means that you pay no interest on all of those gains. Now, you have what's known as the platform, which is the thing that allows you to invest your money with. Now, in this video, we're talking about Vanguard, which is an awesome platform. It's very, very popular, but it's not the only one. I've put £1,000 into my Vanguard general investment account, but I actually have over £122,000 in invested in Fidelity in a mixture of a stocks and shares ISA and a self-invested personal pension. The platform is simply just a bit like a bank account. They're regulated by the FCA and it's an account, whether that's general investment, stocks and shares ISA, self-invested personal pension. You put your money into it and then they allow you to invest your money through different funds. So usually what you'll find is that there is a small platform fee for using their services and all of the user interface and all the stuff they provide in that particular service just to hold your money. Secondly is the fund fee. So now we're in the platform, we've invested our money into it. Now we have to choose a a fund to invest our money into. Now, there's a secondary fee here where you pay the fund fee to a fund manager. Now, these funds have billions and billions of pounds invested into them, and you have these uh, very large companies that will then invest and manage that portfolio for you. So, for that service, you pay a small fee. Now, it sometimes can be 1% to 2%, but you shouldn't be put off or intimidated by this, because if you're investing into higher risk, greater return stocks, then the gains that you'll get from your stocks and shares will more than pay off the cost of the fund itself. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. There may be some negative years where the fund goes down, which is fine because you'll be paying the fund fee and then you'll also be looking at a loss for that particular year. But investing is a long-term strategy and you should put your money away for a minimum of three to five years. And history has shown that over time, so far, all of the stock markets have always gone up over a longer period of time. So look at the wider lens rather than the macro lens. If, for example, you're looking to buy a house this year and you put all of your deposit into a stocks and shares ISA right now, it's not the most sensible option because the market could go down and that means that when you need to pull your money out to use it for the house deposit, you might have made a loss rather than a gain. Now, there are three different types of funds in Vanguard. Firstly, you have the equities, then you have the fixed income, and then you also have the blended funds. And each of these are very different in their own ways. Firstly, the equity funds are the really common stock market exchanges that you see all over the world, like the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in the the US. You've got the FTSE 100, which is the top 100 companies in the UK, as well as the global markets, including Asia Pacific, Japan, and many, many more. This essentially means that you can invest your money in any market all over the world, depending on the risk rating and your own risk appetite. Equity funds are great, and many, many people, if not the majority, invest into these because they're super simple, they're super easy, and rather than having to pick the individual companies and research them that you're putting your money into, instead an index fund is an accumulation of what could be up to hundreds of different companies with a different weighted allocation. So your money goes into the central equity fund and then it's distributed across all of those companies. It's also great because as some companies go down, some will also then go up at the same time. And the whole idea of an index fund or an equity fund is to try and balance out all of those losses and gains to get some form of gain in the entire 
portfolio. One of the big no-nos when it comes to investing is putting all of your eggs into one basket. Now, the worst thing you could do is put all of your money into Bitcoin, for example, because it's extremely volatile and it could massively go down. But if you start to spread your money in an index fund across Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, all of these different companies, you can start to minimize. So if Facebook went down, but Google's going up, it kind of balances out those scales somewhat and hopefully stays positive. The only downside of these types of funds, for example, like me, where I predominantly invest into the US markets, into big tech companies, if there's then an economic issue in the US, then that means the entire fund is likely to go down because all of those companies are linked to the same stock exchange in the US. The S&P 500 is a great example with all of these American companies. Now, a lot of my money is invested there and over history, predominantly over the past 90 years, it's gone up about 10% every single year. And that is compounded growth year on year on year, going up a further 10%. Some years are down, some years are up more, but overall that averaged annualized return is about 10%, which is really, really healthy. You could also go for a fund more closer to home, like the FTSE 100, which includes companies like HSBC, Lloyds Bank, GSK, BT, Aviva, ITV, these are the top 100 companies in the UK listed on the UK Stock Exchange. So you know that they are big, they're trusted, they're making healthy profits, and you're investing your money into well-known brands. Check out funds in more detail on Vanguard. All you have to do is go onto the What We Offer section of the website, and remember to select the detailed toggle, which will then show you performance over the past five years. If you click on the individual funds, you can see how many companies it's investing into, as well as the top 10 allocation. Equity funds overall are known to be a little bit more risky and a little bit more volatile, but over the long term, they tend to go up. It's one of those where there's greater risk, but also greater reward. It means that in a good year, you could gain anywhere from 10% plus on all of your stocks and shares. In a bad year, it could go down five to 10%, but it's all about investing for a minimum of three to five years so you can ride out any negative years and still benefit from some really strong, positive, profitable years that these companies have. For me, over the past five years, I've managed to gain about 30% every single year by investing more into the American markets and specifically into the US tech companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon. All of these have had some really healthy returns over the past few years. The second type of fund on Vanguard is a fixed income fund. Now, this essentially is a bond. Now, we've already explored that index funds are essentially the stocks of some of the big major companies in the UK, in the US and all over the world. Bonds are actually really, really simple. It's essentially a government loan and that's it. And as the interest is repaid back, you start to get some of your money off the back of it. So you help fund the bond, that means then all the interest payments that come back from governments, you get a little bit of a share of that. But it's not guaranteed income as much as people do believe this. This is a very common myth. Bond prices decline when interest rates go up, or even worse, the issuer might go into some financial difficulties, which means that certain loans and bonds aren't going to be repaid back, which is how you can still lose money if you're in some kind of bond investment. When it works well, you earn a really modest amount of interest. It's seen to be more safe and lower risk, which is very true, but it can still go down at the same time. And because the returns that you get on bonds are typically a little bit lower, if inflation is high like it is at the moment, if you're getting two to 3% on a bond and inflation is 5%, you're doing better than you would do in a normal cash ISA, but your money is still losing value relative to the cost of living going up. And on top of that, if you're earning over £10,000 a year and it's not in some kind of form of stocks and shares ISA, you'll then pay capital gains tax on anything above £10,000 that you crystallize upon taking money out of the bond. On Vanguard, all of the fixed income funds show risk rating of about two, three or four, which is considered low to medium low, which isn't too bad. And as you can see over the past five years, the performance has been pretty modest with a few percent gained every single year. However, this year, things are a little bit more turbulent and therefore there has been a small loss. Now, I don't personally invest in bonds. I never have. And I don't think for the current stage of my life that I will because bonds are more safer, they're less risky, but because of that, they have lower returns. Now, I'm in my late 20s and for me at my stage of life, I can afford to take high risk and put my money into riskier, more volatile stocks and shares in the hope to get greater returns because I've still got a whole lifetime ahead of me to ride out any waves of recessions, crashes, dips, all of that worrying stuff. I can still ride all of that through and hopefully get some gains 
off the back of it. With all that being said, bonds are still a decent investment. They're going to be better than anything you can currently get in any savings account in a bank. They're slow, they're safe, they're stable. There's a really small risk with it, but with investing, there's always a risk. So they're not a bad option if you're looking to go into low risk investing, but to try and beat what you can get in a bank account. And over the past five years, when you look at all of the bonds on the Vanguard website, the performance is ranging anywhere from two to 10%. So they're really, really not that bad. If you get the right bond, you could actually beat inflation and earn extra money on top of the cost of living crisis. Lastly, and I think most excitingly, are the Vanguard Life Strategy Funds. Now we've covered what the index funds are, and we've also covered what bonds are. Now these life strategy funds are essentially a blend of the two, and that's why it's known as a blended fund. Because the bonds are seen as lower risk and the index funds and equities are seen as higher risk, they merge the two together. And when you look at the life strategy 20%, 40%, 60%, all this is saying is that it's a mixture of bonds versus the higher risk equities. And really, this is all about you and your risk appetite. If you choose the 20% life strategy fund, this means that 80% is in the more secure bonds and slower growing, but 20% is in the higher risk, higher gain, high reward, index funds and equities all over the world. Versus if you want to go for the full 100%, it's almost like a fund of funds. Whereas I invest into one equity fund or maybe three to four absolute maximum, the life strategy 100% fund will invest into several different funds all over the world at that higher risk rating. So it will still spread your money as much as possible and it will invest your money into these funds of which each fund then invests into hundreds of companies. It's a great way that's really easy, really accessible and not scary in terms of the stock market to spread your money as thinly as possible to minimize any issues in markets anywhere in the world. Over the past five years, the 100% life strategy Vanguard fund has gained anywhere from five to 15%, which is all above inflation and really, really good. It's great for or beginner investors to chuck their money in there, forget about it, look at it in three to five years, and you'll see some really healthy returns. The reality is it is totally up to you when it comes to investing. It's all about your own personal risk appetite. You could go for a really small bond that's low return, but also low risk, or you could go for the most riskiest fund on the entire Vanguard platform, but in the hope to get the highest returns. If you want to find the highest returns on Vanguard, all you have to do is go to the entire list of funds, click on the detailed toggle, and then scroll down down to the US equity funds and here you will see the S&P 500 and the US index equity fund. The top three are the North America index fund which gained 23% in the past year. The S&P 500 has gained 22% in the last year and the US equity index fund has again gained another 24% and 2021 to 2022 have gained a very similar 16 to 19% in that particular year. So very, very healthy returns. But Past performance is not an indicator of future performance, and that's something to bear in mind. I'm starting to put more money into Vanguard. At the moment, I've just put a thousand pounds into two different funds, and they are the stock market index funds. One is the S&P 500, and then the other is the US equity fund. Now, the reality is on these, they're actually pretty similar funds. Their top 10 holdings are really big American companies with a little bit of a weighting into the tech sector, like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, all of these well-known brands that I'm investing money into. But this is because I think that they are great companies. They have huge potential ahead of them. It's been a little bit wobbly this year, but in the grand scheme of things, they're pushing, they're innovating, they're doing incredible things and they're expanding their businesses. Over time, I'll likely diversify more of this into emerging markets and try and spread out the money a little bit wider to put all of those eggs in different baskets. And that's a great way to invest. But at the moment, a lot of my money is stored on the Fidelity side in Fidelity funds as a mixture as a stocks and shares ISA and a self-invested personal pension, which is about 120 to 122,000 pounds valuation at the moment. And that's distributed into technology funds as well as a lot of the American markets. The funds tend to follow the NASDAQ exchange, which is more of a technology-based stock exchange in the US. And the performance over the past few years for 2018 to 2019 gained 39%. And in 2019 to 2020, it gained another 41%, which is absolutely awesome. Last year, it gained an extra 24% on top of that as well. So they've been performing really, really well. Now you've mastered the art of understanding investment funds, you'll need to be able to put more money into them, which is why this video here will really, really help you. And this talks about how I save over 70% of my own income to help you and inspire you to save more of your own money to invest into the stock market. So definitely check out this video here because it will really, really help you.